Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be raising 1 plus i to the power i. In other words, we're going to be doing complex exponentiation. How do you do that? Let's go ahead and take a look. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over the basics. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's see how we can do the complex exponentiation on this problem. First of all, think about some integer powers of 1 plus i. 1 plus i is a very common complex number, by the way, because if you go ahead and take it to the second power, you get 1 plus 2i plus i squared, but you should know, maybe I should have told you, right? i squared equals negative 1, because i is known as the square root of negative 1. All right? So i squared is negative 1, which means these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with 2i. So 1 plus i is a special number, because its second power is imaginary. In other words, it doesn't have a real part, which is cool, right? And then you can take 1 plus i to other powers using this. You can even raise it to the power 2025 if you want. But that's not the point. We want to raise it to the power i. But i is not an irrational number. If it was, for example, if let's say we were considering 1 plus i to the power root 2, could we possibly approximate it? Because square root of 2 is between 2 and 1. So does that mean 1 plus i to the power root 2 is going to be between 1 plus i to the power 1 and 1 plus i to the power 2. But what does it mean for some complex number to be between two complex numbers? You can't order complex numbers, so this is invalid, right? So we can't do that, but you get the idea. Whenever you're being asked something like, let's say, 2 to the power root 3, then you can kind of say that, okay, this is supposed to be greater than 2, but less than 2 to the 2 because root 3 is less than 2. You get the idea, right? It's between 2 and 4, but of course that's a wide interval, but you can approximate it. You can get better and better. With the case of uh, complex exponents, you cannot do that, so we have to use a different approach, a radically different approach. And this is how it's done. We have a formula for complex exponentials. Here's how it goes. z to the power w is equal to e to the power w ln z. If you know that e to the power ln z is z, this is going to make more sense because when you raise both sides to the power w, you're going to get that. But the question is, is this always true when you raise e to the power something and then to the power something else, is it always like that? Yes, it doesn't always work for all bases, but in the case of e, but in the case of e, that seems to be working, right? Anyways, you get the idea. This is our formula. Let's go ahead and use it. But this brings up another question. How do you align a complex number? We'll talk about that next. Okay, so in this case, we have 1 plus i to the power i. So z is 1 plus i, w is i. So this gives us e to the power w, which is i, multiplied by ln 1 plus i. So the next thing we need to look at is ln of 1 plus i. How do you do that? Okay, now we need to talk about the natural log of a complex number. Can I use z again? Maybe. Uh, let's just use z in this case because we already have ln z. So ln z is given as ln r plus i theta. What is r? What is theta? Let me explain. r is the absolute value of z, which is also known as modulus, okay? And theta is the argument, which is the angle. So we can kind of talk about the geometric representation of a complex number. Let's say this is z. We connect it to the, to the origin, and then we basically get a, the distance from 0, and that is the absolute value of z, or something known as r. And of course, this makes an angle, theta, in the positive direction away from the x-axis, which we call the real axis, and this is the, I guess I'm writing on the edge, I'm trying to write outside, real and imaginary, okay? So... How do you find theta and how do you find r? r is easy from Pythagorean theorem. If you think about it, this is going to be the real part and this is going to be the imaginary part. So in other words, we're saying that, okay, z can be written as a plus pi. So absolute value of z, which is r, is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's how you find the absolute value. 
to find the argument, you might as well just plot the number. In this case, it's easy because it's one plus i. So if you just think about how one plus i would be plotted, easy right here. And guess what that's gonna make? It is gonna make a isosceles right triangle, which means this angle is pi over four radians. Beautiful. So we got theta is pi over four, and r is root two from the Pythagorean theorem. Oops, how did I know that so quick? Because this is one and this is one. So the hypotenuse is supposed to be root two. Make sense? Okay, great, that's the right triangle. So we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and plug it into this equation, right? Okay, but one thing to keep in mind, theta doesn't have a single value. Why? Because if you just give it a full rotation, it'll bring you to the same angle, but that angle is pi over four plus two pi, which is nine pi over four. It's not the exact same thing as pi over four. So in other words, argument has infinitely many values, but the smallest one between negative pi and pi is considered the principal argument. So in this case, the principal value of the argument is pi over four, but to represent all possibilities, we're gonna add multiples of two pi. So here's how it goes. We're gonna go ahead and write this formula one more time. Ln z equals ln r plus i theta. And then obviously this comes from the fact that we can write z as follows, right? If you ln both sides, that's what you get. You can also think of it that way. Now ln r is just gonna be ln square root of two and theta is pi over four. But again, that's the principal argument. So I'm gonna add multiples of two pi to it, which I can represent as two pi n, where n is an integer. In this case, I just use one plus i because z equals one plus i. So this is the ln of z, okay? That'll be multiplied by, oops, I forgot to write ln one plus i equals ln root two. Wait a minute, what am I trying to do here? Uh, never mind, uh, this is, I don't need to repeat that. Actually, let's go back here, one plus i to the i, yes, that's where I need to pick up from. This is e to the power i ln one plus i. So what we're gonna do next is substitute this whole thing here, you see that? So now one plus i to the i is gonna be e to the power i times ln one plus i, which can be written as ln root two plus i times pi over four plus two pi n. That's kind of gigantic, right? But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more because this is gonna be interesting. When you distribute, you're gonna get i ln root two and then i times i is i squared. So that's gonna give us a minus sign and we don't need to write the i anymore and it's gonna look like this. And as you know, we can separate these two things and write this as e to the power negative pi over four minus two pi n, which I can easily turn into plus two pi k if I just assume that negative n is equal to k and n and k are both integers, obviously. So and this cannot be separated into these two things. And why is that important? Because Euler's formula. Euler said e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. It's the most beautiful equation in math. There's nothing more beautiful than that, right? So we can go ahead and use it here, which means this is our theta. Make sense? Okay, so here's what it's gonna look like at the end. e to the power of negative pi over four plus two pi k. Again, k is an integer. You can replace k with anything you want. Times e to the power of i theta will be written as cosine of ln root two plus i sine of ln root two. ln root two happens to be the argument here, and this is gonna be our modulus, okay? If you distribute, fine. If you don't distribute, that's also fine. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.